Come on, will you? Hey, Nick. I think I just saw Frank Harbeck's wife go in. You sure? I think so. you note about your dad being sick. Uh, you probably spend the night there. How is he? Dad's all right. You say you got home about an hour ago? Mm-hmm. Overtime? No. Just out walking around. What were they doing here, Frank? Who? Oh. Nick and Freddie. What do you mean, Nick and Freddy? I haven't seen Nick and Freddy. I saw them leaving. And you had the door latched. Now, what were you doing that you didn't want me to see? Honey, what do you mean, what was I doing that I didn't want you to see? I wasn't doing anything. Frank! Come on, honey. It's late. We're tired. We'll talk about it tomorrow, huh? We'll talk about it now. They just came up to talk. At 2 o'clock in the morning? Cindy, please. Look, honey, it's not what you think. Believe me. All right. Tell me. I can't. Oh, honey, come on. Now, don't go. Don't tell your father. He's a cop. You'll go jump into the wrong conclusions. Honey, you've got to trust me. I do trust you. But it's a two-way street, Frank. And you've got to trust me, too. Now, will you tell me what you were doing with them? of law offers a variety of challenges. It's not only a vocation, but it can be an avocation. I'd spent the last three weeks on a criminal case involving a man who'd been unjustly imprisoned. He'd been released this afternoon. Now I could return to the gentle drama of corporate law. Or so I thought. Mr. Maris? Yes, Brent? Uh, uh, Mr. Frank Harbach called a little while ago. Frank Harbeck. Should I recognize the name? Well, no, I don't believe so, but... Uh, What'd you do? Do? Your hair. It's different. Oh, oh yeah, it, it is. I, I thought I'd try it this way. Uh, he said? Oh, he, he said something about a robbery. A robbery? Yes, but he doesn't want to go to the police. You mean he committed the robbery? Oh, no, he didn't commit the robbery, but he saw it or he knows something about it. He sounded so frightened and unhappy. I, well, I think he needs some help and advice. All right, Miss Brent. You tell him to see me the first thing in the morning. Hmm? Oh, well, I suggested that. But he says he has to see you tonight. That's impossible. He says if he doesn't, someone may get hurt badly. He sounded so desperate and sincere. Well, I, I kind of let him know that you would help him. Miss Brent. And then he hung up. He's going to be waiting for you at 10 o'clock in Merlin Park. Merlin Park? By the old North Gate. He seems so hysterical that I... I guess I just sort of got caught up in it. All right, Miss Brent. Your intuitive feelings have been pretty accurate to date. I'll see him. I, I, I'm really dreadfully sorry. Don't be. Oh, uh... 
Incidentally, I like it. Pardon? Your hairdo. Oh. oh well, well, thanks. Don't you think you'd better go home and patch up that lover's quarrel? Dad, you don't understand. Your mother and I had a rule, Cindy, and that was a good one. Never stay sore for more than 24 hours, and then talk it over. Always talk it over. This is no lover's quarrel, Dad. I think Frank is seeing his old gang again. What makes you think so? I saw them leaving the house the other night when I came home. And I tried to talk to him, and he wouldn't. So that's why I came back here. Frank didn't explain anything? No, he just asked me to trust him. Cindy, do you know how hard it was for me, a hard-bitten cop, to accept Frank as a son-in-law? But I tried because you asked me. I got to know him, to like him, and what's more, to trust him. He's your husband, honey. You can't walk away from that. Have a little faith. The same faith you asked me to have. Now, why don't you run along home? Twenty-four hours is almost up. Mr. Myers. Mr. Myers? Is that you, Harbeck? Look, nobody failed you, did you? You didn't see anybody following you. Nobody followed me. Mr. Myers, I'm in real trouble. I'm in big trouble. You've got to help Wait me. Wait Slow down, will you? Now, what's this all about, huh? Come on. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No further now. This is as far as I go. What's this all about? Look, I, I work at the Carthay Tool and Die Company. I was robbed last night. And you were involved in the robbery? No, no, no. But they're going to say I was. They? Who's they? Nick and Freddie. Nick Mason and Freddie Olstead are two guys I did a stretch with. I, I got a record, but it was a long time ago. I'm married now. I worked at Carthay for almost two years. But, but, but uh, I'm straight, you know? And it just isn't going to make any difference minute, if these Harvick, guys... You're not making much sense. First, you say you're not involved in a robbery. Then you say you're an honest citizen with a record. Then you start worrying about two guys. What can they say to hurt you? They can say that I was in on the job. Well, were you? No, I tell you, I'm clean. The only thing is I just don't have an alibi for the time of the robbery. That's a hook. They want me to alibi for them. Well, why do you come to me? Why don't you tell the police? They said they'd get my wife Cindy if I did. Mr. Morris, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Well, the first thing you should do is get your wife police protection. No, no, no. I can't go to the police. Nick and Freddie are around loose. They'll see me. And if they see cops around, Cindy, they're just going to dig themselves a hole and wait till the cover's called off and then get her. I guess she's safe enough at Joe's place for the time being. Who's Joe? Joe Williams. Her dad, he's a cop. You mean the detective Joe Williams that works out on Lieutenant Weston's precinct? Yeah, that's him. Well, uh, does your wife know anything about this? No. Would you at least go to the cops, find out what the score is? Maybe I'll go to them later, after they guarantee Cindy protection. Would you set it up for me? All right, I'll see that she gets police protection. I'll be back in an hour. Where will you be? I'll be right here. All right. Mr. Maris, thank you. Still here? Look, I've got work to do. So have you. What have you been trying to tell me all evening? Well. Well, look, if you're still feeling a little woozy, knock it off tonight. You can pick it up tomorrow. No, it's not that, Lieutenant. It's... Well, it's. It's about Frank, my son in law. Well, what about him? Spit it out. I don't know how to tell you, but. Uh, hello, Lieutenant. You know Sergeant Joe Williams. Sergeant? Maris, what are you doing here this hour of the night? The Carthay Tool and Die Company ring a bell with you. Loud and clear. It was robbed last night, $30,000 missing from the safe, and the guard was shot. 
Dead? No, it looks like he'll be okay. Why? Do you know who did it? Two punks. A couple of witnesses saw them drive away. It was a stolen car, abandoned. You think it was an inside job? Uh, who sent you here? A very frightened young man who claims he had nothing to do with the crime. Young man named Frank Harbach? I thought so. It adds up. When I heard about the robbery, I pulled Frank's file. Six years ago, when he was in trouble, he was involved with Nick Mason and Freddie Olstead. Those are the two names he mentioned. That's what you've been trying to tell me all evening. Sorry, Joe. Looks like these three are our boys. Now, just a minute. Let's not start jumping to conclusions. Harbach claims he was innocent, and he could be. Your witness said there were only two men involved in that robbery. Why didn't he come to us? They also threatened to harm his wife if he came to you. Now consider his position. A man with a record, a wife in jeopardy, no alibi for the time of the crime. And if you arrest Mason and Olstead, they threaten to involve him in the crime. But we can't let him run loose. I'm only telling you what I was told. At least, at least give his wife protection until you can pick them up. Lieutenant. Let me take care of the protection end of it. Okay, Joe. All right, Herb, what about Harbor? How soon can you get him here? Within an hour. And did you know that you could be an accessory to murder as well as robbery if the guard dies? What guard? The one that was shot. You mean Luke Gordon? I didn't hear his name mentioned. They didn't say anything about shooting anybody. I also told Lieutenant Weston you'd come in voluntarily. All right, I will. But now what about Cindy? Joe's taking care of that. I think we'd better go. Look, Mr. Maris. I know this is going to sound worse for me. I have the money hidden in my apartment. You have? No, look, don't go getting the wrong ideas. I'm just holding it sure, for them. Sure, sure. Two men steal $30,000, give it to you, and you're not involved. Oh, look, don't you see? Nick and Freddie didn't, didn't want to have the money on them. They know they're spotted, so they ditched their car. Then if they get shook down at some kind of roadblock or something, they're clean. I'm supposed to take it to them tomorrow, meet them at the Alpine Motel, 40 miles north on the turnpike. Come on, Harback. Lieutenant Weston's waiting for us. We'll straighten this all out later. Oh, won't you believe me? Don't you listen to me? I already have. Now, I told Lieutenant Weston I'd get you in there in an hour. Let's go, shall we? Look, all right, I'll go with you. I'll even bring the money with me. Maybe that'll help. I don't live very far from here. All right, let's go, let's go. Frankie, who's your friend? Uh, it's M Mr. Maris. He's a uh, friend. Maris? Oh, I just don't understand it, Mr. Maris. Now, how come a nice man like you was mixed up with this Frank? I mean, you've got a big reputation. You shouldn't mess around with this kind of punk. He's no good. You can't trust him. Hey, Frank, get me the money, will you? No. Uh, Oh, you don't get the money until you... Tell Maris the truth. Oh, Freddie, hold it. Hold it, Freddie. What truth, Frank? That I had nothing to do with this. That you want me to alibi for you. That you gave me the money to hold. Is that what you want? He's telling the truth, Mr. Maris. He's clean. All right, Fred? Now go get me the money. Take it out nice and easy, please. It's Time is a relative factor. When danger threatens, minutes become precious. 
and Lieutenant Weston became worried when a half hour past the deadline, I hadn't returned with Frank Harback. Now, just a minute. Where are you taking us? You got a private office, Mr. Maris. So do we. We're going to have a private conversation. Come on, come on. Ready? Start the discussion. Discussion, Frank. Freddy, Freddy, stop. Mr. Maris, uh, Frank came to you for help. So help him, help him get smart. Wise him up, huh? <laughs> Word it. I don't help. You boys are very big with a gun, aren't you? I can handle you without a gun, Maris. You two have quite a score. Armed robbery and kidnapping. When are you going to stop? Well, as soon as we get the 30 grand, we're going to blow out of here. I don't have it. I don't know where the money is. He could have turned it over to the cops. No, no, no. The cops would have showed on the doorstep when we were there. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he is telling the truth. If he doesn't have it, who does? Listen, who lives in that apartment with Frank? His wife. No. Oh. Go get her. No. Oh. You know where she is. Oh, yes, we do, buddy boy. <laughs> that was a very touching scene you two put on last night. Trust is a two-way street. It gets you right here, don't it? <laughs> Go get her. Hey, suppose it's a trap. Suppose the cops are waiting for me. Freddy, first you take a good look around. But if the cops happen to show, you, you got aces back to back. You tell them cops you ain't back here in an hour, Frank and his friend are dead. You got that, Freddy? Yeah. And I remember that last night when I got home, the chain was on the door. I heard Frank in the kitchen slamming the drawers. Why'd you back the apartment? Some good advice I got about never letting a quarrel last more than 24 hours. I wanted to believe him. I wanted him to tell me that I was wrong. Then I go in the kitchen and I find Do You know where your husband is now? No, and furthermore, I don't And furthermore, care. you listen to me, Cindy. There's more than your husband involved in this. There's a friend of mine, Herb Maris, a lawyer. Your husband went to him for help. What was he doing with Nick and Freddy? Nick and Freddy threatened him, and they also threatened you. I'm, I'm sorry. Now with the money missing and all, no panic, no t Who is it? This is Harback. I'd like to talk to you. Uh, just a moment. Nick Mason. <laughs> we'll find him, Freddy. But when, Lieutenant? If I'm not back by three o'clock, certain people are gonna... Well, you get the picture. Now look, Mr. Maris. If Freddy's in the trap, you're dead. The minute somebody starts coming down those stairs, I start blasting the two of you. Murder, Nick? Cold-blooded murder? Why not? Three for the price of one. You're no murderer. You didn't kill anybody. Hey, Maris, what about that bank guard I knocked off for the 30 grand, huh? He's alive. Hey, come on, tell that to somebody else, not me. Well, check it yourself, call the hospital. It's the general hospital, the name is Lou Gordon. Hey, who do you think you're talking to, a kid or something? I can smell that trap a mile away. You got 27 minutes, Mr. Maris. You understand me? What's the time, Lieutenant? You don't have much time, Junior. We don't make any deals here. 
If anything happens to Herb Maris or Harbach, you're gonna be up for murder as well as armed robbery. You remember that. You're a lot of talk. How are you gonna tie me with this Harbach and Maris? I got the greatest alibi. You. I'm nowhere near the scene of the crime. No rough stuff, please. None of that police brutality. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, can I talk to you? Please, Lieutenant. No, we're not going to have none of that. I'll make him talk. I guarantee now, I listen will. Listen to me, Joe. You know the rules. You know them better than anybody else. Don't give me that rules routine. Listen, to no, as long as I'm running this department, you'll obey orders. But I can make him talk. I'll break his neck. Any more of that and you face suspension. Suspension? I got news for you. 20 years on the force and I can't even protect my own family? Here, I'm through. I quit. Cool down, Joe. Now listen to me. I got an idea. Five more minutes. Just give me five minutes and I'll come back and we'll talk it over. All right? You hear that, Junior? I'm not a cop anymore. Now you talk, or I take you apart with my bare hands. Talk! You're wrong. You're making a mistake. Don't double talk me, Maris. Frank made the mistake. He made the mistake when he went to the cops. Frank didn't go to the police. Oh, yeah? Then where's Freddy? Why ain't he back? You know him better than we do. You tell us. Well, he went to get the money. Well, suppose he did. Does it naturally follow he'll get back? Nice try, Maris. Nice try. But Freddy and me have been together a long time. I know him just like I know myself. Sure you do. You've worked together, protected each other, lied for each other. You're a good team. That's right. But have you ever had your hands on $30,000 before? Are you trying to be funny? Hmm? We just stole that last night from the Carthay Tool and Die Company. But you don't have it. Yeah, well, Freddie, you'll get it. If Frank had cut his big mouth shut. I said you didn't have it. Suppose you had your hands on $30,000 and Freddy was holding us at gunpoint, and the plan was to shoot us if you didn't get back in an hour. Wouldn't that be a great way to not only keep the money, but get rid of your partner as well? Freddy wouldn't do that. Not to me. Not to me! The question is, would you do that to him? Shut your mouth, you hear me? You shut your big mouth! Uh... It's good to see you, Lieutenant. Check him and get him out of here. How'd you get Freddy to talk? Sergeant Joe Williams, what a performance. Yeah, he'll be going for a while. I'll tell you about it sometime. What happened here? Uh, you should have seen Mr. Maris work him over, Lieutenant. It was beautiful. Well, you did this? With words, Lieutenant, with words. <laughs> Lieutenant. Yeah. Yeah. Herb, you coming? 